Well, this is an interesting pathological case. This is a 74-year-old female patient with IOP of 30 to 50 millimeter mercury since several months. The anterior chamber is completely flat and there is iris IOL touch. A intraocular lens is present. So the first step is of course to perform an anterior vitrectomy to reduce the intraocular pressure. If necessary you have to perform a dry vitrectomy without infusion. If the globe is soft then you can perform a paracentesis and inject viscoelastics into the interior chamber. Observe the cornea iris touch. The interior chamber was completely flat. Now the, now the globe is soft and uh, you have re-established the interior chamber. The next step is a limbal peritomy at 12 o'clock to prepare a frown incision. I marked 6 mm and I'm continuing now with a bevel up knife. A scleral incision, frown incision from 12 o'clock. Enter first interior chamber, uh, interior first the interior chamber if the knife is in the clear cornea. Now like this. Otherwise you will have an iris prolapse. Then in then continue to cut until the marking, which is six millimeter. Now I'm luxating the IOL <coughs> with the cutter at twelve o'clock. And then the next step is the extraction of the IOL with a 23 gauge serrated jaws forceps. This is usually a very easy maneuver, but in this case it gets very difficult. I'm getting some help with a Castavillo forceps and I don't know why the extraction is so difficult. Important is not to use force now. The IOL is obviously stuck. So why is there no success? Is the sclera incision too small? Are there posterior synechia or something else? Uh, now I'm first removing the posterior synechia and luxating the, IOL, the IOL into the interior chamber. Now I'm trying to extract the IOL again with the um, serrated jaws forceps. So again, no success, and um, I, I will. Uh, I do now enlarge the scleral incision. Um, maybe the IL got stuck inside the scleral incision, and then again luxation of the IOL at 12 o'clock. Observe now there is something else, and this is a capsular tension ring which I did not observe earlier on. So I'm trying now to extract the capsular tension ring with the same forceps. But there's again 
um, no success really a tricky extraction now I'm using a synth cook on the left side and I'm trying now instead to extract again the IOL now it is very easy and the IL is extracted. Observe the um, capsule tension ring. I will now luxate the end of the ring on top of the iris. And then I will extract the end of the capsule tension ring with my serrated jaws forceps from the temporal paracentesis the nasal paracentesis so I'm uh, I, th I, I think that the reason for the difficult extraction was the posterior sarnicia and the capsular tension ring. Observe the pigmentation on the IOL from the iris. Now um, there's another trick. If you irrigate the entire chamber from um, from the sclera incision and press on the lower lip of the incision then you can remove fragments from the tear chamber viscoelastics, blood and cortical fragments then of course continued vitrectomy from pars plana you can also observe some cortical fragments which drop now onto the retina then interior vitrectomy from the limbus uh, double check if there is vitreous prolapse using an iris spatula irrigation um, of the blood using BSS and then removal of this blood clot using a vitreous cutter it's important only to aspirate and not to cut the cutter will damage the iris at once so only aspiration and no cutting I'm inserting now a third trocar to remove the cortical fragments from the retina I actually don't think that they would cause an inflammation because they have been inside the eye many years so being an interior fragment segment surgeon actually I would just leave them and observe now implantation of an artisan IOL and now rotation of the IOL with a rotator from AMO now I'm holding the IOL with an IOL forceps from AMO um, behind the iris and now a very bad luck an air bubble comes into the interior segment I have to hold with the right hand the IOL and the left hand injects viscoelastics and removes the air bubble so you have to work by manual in this situation now I can continue enclavation which is difficult on the temporal side because there is still blood on the iris the enclosure of the sterile incision with a 
Baikul 80 cross suture. Don't make it tight, only loose, because it has to be only form stable. The sterilization is always watertight, usually. Conclusion If the IO cannot be removed, then do not use force and look for posterior sinecure or a capsular tension ring. Thank you very much.